Hi kids, it's your old friend Buddy Bill, and today's episode is themed Love in the Modern Age. But let me warn you, love in the modern age can be a scary thing. Sometimes it can be a pretty girl you meet on Instagram who's selling her socks. Sometimes it might be a YouTube movie reviewer who wants to suck his dog. So without further ado, this is Love in the Modern Age. Welcome to Business 101-56751, aka Sexual Harassment. Now, what can you guys tell me about sexual harassment? It's bad. And? But. Somebody tell me how to avoid a Me Too. Jerk off alone? Correct, if you want to play it that route. But this is how I play it. She started it. Now, when I say she started it, I'm not saying she was just like, take me now, I'm yours. No, definitely not. Nah, not at all. This is how I'm saying she started it. How you know she started it? Oh, hi. She engaged initial reactions to see what would go down. She knew damn well, she knew damn well. You're a dude, so you're just gonna be like, Sup, babe? I got a wifey. But you can be my boot thing. When that comes around, you should think real hard and hard about that shit when you're talking about you want her to be your boo thing. Because a whole shit ton of drama about to pop off right there, bro. You gotta deal with one. Potential pregnancies, baby daddy, coming at you. This is what everybody, can somebody tell me what most dudes deal with when they get boo things slash side chicks? Your main girl catching on? Not even, bro. It's the side chick acting up. Cause she see what you're doing for, for your main chick and she just like, oh, I can't, I can't have you doing that for your main chick cause I want that myself. That's when Me Too comes along. You like that, right? Me. <laughs> oh my God. Come on. Is it me or is it really hot in here? I'm about to teach you how to make a quick buck easy and pain free. Hey, um, my name's Jay, and uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I got incredibly brown eyes. You wanna... What am I looking for? I'm looking for a girl with... I'm looking for a girl with a humble smile. I'm, lo I'm looking for a girl with a hum with a humble smile. Yeah, um, I'm looking uh, for a girl with a humble smile. Is that you? Is that you? So, the type, you know, the kind of girl that's right for me, there's gonna be somebody who doesn't mind when I happen to go on tangents. I like a good, I like a good girl. I like a girl with epicanthic folds. Somebody who's not gonna mind when I chew gum close to the lavalier. Today's day and age where you got these all these new school women hanging out on Vox.com and they're like, you know, you like a good Asian girl because she's going to be submissive. She's going to cook you dinner and do this and that. Why can't I just like slant the eyes? You know how there was like a period in the mid-aughts where all of a sudden 
it was like every white chick with that, uh, you know, and it's a played out meme, but the, can I speak to your manager haircut? I was addicted to fucking black guys. Well, you gotta kind of look for that with the Asians as well, but it's not black dudes that they're getting pounded by. It's 65 year old men. Have you noticed this? Have you gone out to a restaurant in New York City and just seen a 19 year old Korean lady hanging out with a dude who looks like he could be her grandpa, but he's white? It's disgusting. Truth be told, every every white chick that I've dated has always like had a chip on her shoulder in terms of the world. Like she's mad at her dad and she has to go be a CEO for three years at some company that's a startup and nobody really cares about. I feel deeply uncomfortable on this wicker couch here. Oof. I, you know, I got like 60 year old joints. Kind of got that Joe Namath pose here. If you think that's the kind of man you're after, then look no further. You know, I guess ultimately what I find most attractive, do I look like a jack-o'-lantern when I do this? What I find most attractive is a girl with a clean vagina. Quench your thirst with another cool sip of comfort system. Fuck, Mary kill, Winnie Mandela, and Frank, Helen Keller. Okay, um, okay, so you, uh, so you kill Anne Frank, which is a tattletale. You, you marry, uh, Winnie Mandela. No, you fuck Winnie Mandela, because she's dead. Uh, and then you marry, uh, Helen Keller, because she's, she can keep a secret. Or, I'm I'm looking for I'm looking for a hip girl with with a humble smile. And to end this, I just want you to know that um, I'm not afraid of getting sand on my ankles. Uh, as long as you're not afraid of getting you know w the wind mess your your hair when when I take your your shirt off. Message me if you're interested. Um, if you're interested in all this, just mess message me. V vote for me. Boy howdy, that was quite the sketch. How about another one? This one's about a man who has love for the game. The game being football. Why does it smell like dirty pussy in here? The American Football Network presents Forgotten Legends, a retrospective on America's would-be athletes, brought to you by OJ's Cold Cuts. When I was a young boy, I came to the border with my parents. We used to watch TV, we used to watch all the hotshot big man on campus sports, I'm not talking about you know, soccer. I had a cousin who played soccer and he seemed not right, if you know what I mean. When I first applied, the coach said to me, hey, look, you're just a pipsqueak. You're not gonna make it. You can eat apples every day of your life. You're not gonna build the muscle you need to be out there on that field and doing what needs to be done. So you're gonna be a loser out there. You're gonna embarrass your parents, the other dads, who are watching the game, they're gonna look at you and say, that kid's not even really on the team, he's just standing around. Your mom's gonna take you home after that game, start putting scrunchies in your hair, start setting you down the course that your life is probably gonna take because you're not gonna cut it as a man. Little did he know, little did anybody know, that I would be the top rising athlete for my school. We're currently hanging out in the heart of Long Island, Strong Island as I call it. I could be living in one of these if they didn't pull me from my football team. I was a star. I was a career-making athlete. All the older kids, the seniors, they would tell me, you're the coolest dog in town. And then they would give me a good old-fashioned smack on the rear because that's what you would do back then. It wasn't considered a gay thing. If your coach sat you down on his lap and whispered in your ear, you know, you remind me of my wife sometimes. That's not a gay thing. That's just quality male bonding time, trying to appreciate the athletic prowess of a man. <laughs> I gotta catch my breath, I just ran here. I had to catch the train. Ugh. 
And again, I don't feel entitled to this house over here. You're the camera lady. You're supposed to get a shot of the house. If I'm saying get a shot of the house. I don't feel entitled to this house over here with the residents who can't even keep keep up with their the landscaping. You know, that tree looks fucking gross and dead. So this is where I spent my teen years playing for the local team. I was a star QB. Nobody had anything on me. I'd show up every Monday night, you know, Friday night football. I'd be tossing that pigskin around like I was Elmer Fudd. All the boys on the team, like I mentioned before, they looked up to me. They cherished my intuition, my leadership. And without me, they'd all be washed up. Washed up nobodies, forgotten in a yearbook, in a high school yearbook that nobody looks at anymore. Because nobody goes to their 10 year reunions after the first decade has passed. Because it's just depressing. You know, you see a bunch of fat people. There's a lot of folks that are trapped on methamphetamines, unhappy wives. You know, they feel insecure about their stretch marks all along their belly because they've had one too many kids. They're not attractive to anybody anymore. It's a sad situation. You don't want to be reminded of those things. So I like to keep a mindset where I'm still 17 years old and my uncle comes and visits me in my bedroom at 9 o'clock every night when everyone else goes to sleep. That's the kind of life I want to pursue as an adult man. And this is where it began for me. A lot of molester jokes in this. Yeah, <laughs> you know me, baby. Lukewarm, sultanous, sexy, star of over a hundred of the steamiest warm action flicks to ever hit pornographic celluloid. And I live in my grandma's basement. She has cable TV. The perfect date. <laughs> Where do I begin? You, me, shag carpets, wood paneling on the walls. We got the film library of Robert Czar so you and I can stare at his chin in awe. And then we've got menthol cigarettes by the carton. You and me are gonna suck them down completely. Then I'm gonna take you down to the jungle. I'm gonna take you where the buffalo roam and show you really how the deer and the antelope play. And then maybe the next morning, when we smell like menthol regret and daddy issues, I'll take you over to Denny's. Nothing says I hop quite like a used condom. That is weird. That I, like right on the front stairs of I hop. How does this come about? Though? Yeah, That's yeah, what I don't, I'm I don't see like yeah, I'm going in for breakfast. You know what? I wonder how this condom. Let me just drop this used <laughs> condom. <laughs> what if the actual thought of just eating pancakes at I hop made them splooge so hard so they, they came prepared? Wear, so they wear a condom when they <laughs> they have to wear a safety. Helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Regular Nancy Drew.
My name is Craig Dawson. I'm a 46-year-old man, upper middle class, seeking a younger, intelligent female with an open mind and a penchant for exploration. If this interests you and you'd like to grab a cup of coffee, feel free to message back with the word hog in the title of the email. Thanks. Sup is getting cold. Craig the peas. Sometimes I wonder why I married you. Boy, you trying to send me that money out for to get my ass cleaned up? You can be my fortune cookie any day. Say. You're not a 35-year-old Costa Rican man, right? Craig, baby. I ain't finna thinking to me the woman to send me the three city, three hundred and fifty dollars. When we together, I'm a sit on your face and suffocate you. Craig, you gotta get rid of this girl. She's not real. Do you like to huff gas? Look, if there's three things I know, it's motor oil, catfish, and Frankenstein movies. Wait a sec, I don't know what that means. I don't know what you're saying. Time once again, kids. The episode is over, and just in time, too. I've got an 11 o'clock screening of cruising to take my son to. Cue the unlicensed music.
Hey, this is a message for Corky from Buffalo Buford. Congratulations, man. You dodged that sexual misconduct charge. Now, we know you didn't do it. I mean, as a matter of fact, I'm as happy as a clam. As happy as I've been since George H.W. was mauled to death by a gang of small children he kept in his basement. Uh, it just feels good to beat the justice system, doesn't it? Well, anyway, in the meantime, I got a fresh deer carcass here for me to eat. So, yeah, until then, keep it in your pants, dickhead.